to some extent, uh, what I wanted to ask was asked uh, before, but I'll try to say something uh, new, okay? All right. Um, I spoke of uh, objectivism as I understand it, and I, I must say I, I'm not particularly uh, surprised by some of your responses. I've seen uh, some of these uh, types of objections discussed. You asked why should life and flourishing be good if that is the standard of right and wrong. Can we not ask, well, why should you choose to live? Why, why what? Why should one choose to live? Uh -huh. And uh, you also thought that even if, uh, maybe if you could answer that, you still can't understand or make sense of a duty yes. uh, to do so. Mm -hmm. And you also said that you couldn't find any uh, reason to suppose that there is any kind of moral accountability. Right. Now, I'll say the first two uh, have been addressed in, in books like uh, Dr. Tara Smith of the uh, University of Texas has written about uh, Rand's theories, but the last one kind of astonished me um, that it seems that you take moral accountability to mean responsibility for your actions after death. Yes. But it is quite clear that here on earth you reap the consequences of your own actions and it makes a huge difference in your life as the questioner who followed me indicated whether you live as uh, a productive person who respects the rights of others to be the same type of uh -huh. being or you go around doing whatever the heck you feel like so I, I yeah. was kind of astonished that you I think to some extent there's just a disagreement about terms here. No, no, I, 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 I hear you. I'm just, I think your view is just incredibly naive, frankly. As I said in the talk, if you are sufficiently powerful, like a Ferdinand Marcos or Papa Doc Duvalier or Donald Trump, then you can pretty much live in self-indulgence without worrying about those kinds of consequences. Look at Marcos. Marcos lived off the back of the Philippine people for his whole life, drove them into grinding poverty. Why, Imelda had thousands of shoes and elaborate gowns and they lived in palaces. And finally, Marcos gets deposed and dies in Hawaii. He certainly did not get his just desserts in this life. I think one of the, one of the Frustrations, I think, of the moral life is that the wicked often flourish and the good perish and, and die. I, this life is not equitable. And so I think it's just naive to think that if you don't live a moral life that everything is going to, you're going to be held accountable in this life. That's just naive. But, sir, I may respond that I take you, your position, to be naive for remember that I did not say I'm a materialist. Now, there is such a thing as psychological health. And psychological health has relevance for whether I flourish or not. Mm -hmm. And now I ask you seriously, was a dictator, I don't know this particular man very well, a psychologically healthy and happy human being? Yeah, I have no idea. I mean, but you really have no idea? I mean, people are a certain way, and I do not think that it is necessarily so simple to conclude that if one acts in such a way as a dictator, everything will just be fine, and my position is naive. I, what is naive, I think, is, to, is the view that people's desert in life is always just. I think that's extraordinarily naive. Now, I haven't done a psychological profile of Ferdinand Marcos or even Donald Trump, but I, 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 I think it would be very difficult to show that wicked people are, that their psychological state correlates exactly with uh, the, their, their wickedness in such a way that they somehow are unhappy or, or something of that sort. And certainly, when you do look at the reverse side of the coin, the good often perish young the, and, and don't get their just desserts. Think of the, the, the good people who have given their lives for others. 
uh, and have been cut short in the prime of life or in, in, in youth because of, of their sacrifice for others. I, I don't think that those folks get their just desert. And you know, this problem was so severe that Immanuel Kant, as who you probably know, the great German philosopher, in his moral system, he said we must postulate immortality in order to bring virtue and happiness into alignment. Because in this life, virtue and happiness are not equitably proportioned. And therefore, Kant said it is a postulate of moral reason that there is immortality because that's the only way that virtue and happiness can be brought into proportion with each other. It is simply not true that the happiest people in this life are the virtuous ones and that the unhappy ones are the, are the wicked ones. Uh, sadly, this life is terribly inequitable. And so I, I, I think that apart from God, a perfectly righteous judge, there, we cannot count upon the contingencies of history and life to bring about moral accountability in this life.